Um, but yeah, just want to talk really quickly. So this is the second year that we've run the diversity and cyber panel. We've got a whole new group of uh, people joining us today. We've got some really exciting talent from across the industry working cyber. So um, just want to thank you so much for your time. Um, so my colleague, Kriti Mohun, who's, who's talked earlier today, myself, Shereen Pirufini, we are uh, on board of the Cloud Security Alliance UK chapter. We work in industry. Um, and this, I think, is a topic that's quite, we've actually both, both we have Mauritian descent. Uh, so it's quite, it's quite funny that we met each other, Kriti, isn't it? Um, <laughs> it's very, it feels like it's a very niche uh, area that we're working in. Um, but yeah, so really excited to have some amazing people join us today. We had Owenati already, uh, who, who spoke um, at lunchtime, did our lunchtime talk. Um, Dimitri as well joining us today, also on the, on, on the board of the CSA UK chapter. Sonia, lovely to meet you, Tiziana. We have also, we're hoping to have Chani as well um, to join us shortly. Um, but what we could do is, because I think we're going to, we'd probably overrun uh, on this because we, these, the, the talk last year was very enjoyable. So I think we'll, we'll have fun today. So what, what I can do is, if, if everyone's happy to get started, um, what we could do is just start making some introductions. So the format that, that we're going to use today is what I'd like to do is just go around all the different participants and maybe just spend one to two minutes um, introducing yourself um, and tell us something exciting about yourself. And then what we'll do is we'll go into the questions uh, for, for, for the panel today. So, sh who should I pick on first? Is that okay? And Kriti, would you like to say anything actually before we get started? I'm, I'm good. No, I'm happy with the introduction now. Next, the Shireen. So yeah, I'm good introduce then. myself. I mean, I, I did earlier, but again for the panel and for our new audience who's just joined us, welcome. And so my name is Kriti Mohan, and I have uh, been in the industry for about 14 years now. I started as a network security admin. And then slowly from there grew, uh, working on Cisco firewall devices, learning how to do cabling, routing, switching, physical cabling, running cables, which was fun. Um, and then from there grew to work at uh, Qualys, where I did a bit of vulnerability management, um, and then moved to do firewalls again back at Checkpoint and now at Palo Alto. So I have to say I've been in the product vendor market for some time, just working with firewalls lately and uh, <clears throat> a lot more than firewalls, cloud security, on-prem security, data center security, um, looking into user roles, access security, application security, and there is broad understanding of pretty much the whole security industry as such. So that's a little bit about me, really. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Should we go around, we'll go around clockwise. Um, let's see. Dimitri, would you mind introducing yourself and, and tell us something exciting about yourself? Oh, Dimitri, you're on mute there. The most overused oh, phrase for the last two years. <laughs> it should be a meme, Shireen. Definitely, I'm sure it is. Um, <laughs> I don't know about exciting, um, but I certainly can just, just um, share a little bit about myself. So, um, very sort of similar. Um, starting point you know um from um Kriti. so i started as a techie i think my first real job was um uh i kept gemini so i was a network slash scenarios unix engineer and i have always been interested in security so um, the security aspects of it um, i've always been into it but security was a niche field for me and i recall the days when i used to go to um, what they call, I think, I forget what it's called, it's been such a long time ago, uh, at least 15 years ago, um, there was a meeting, a hacker meeting, and hacker in the nicest sense of the word, because hacker really is someone who likes to understand how things work and break them in the nicest way, and there was meetings in the Trocadero with like-minded individuals. So um, I've always been to security, um, and, um, you know, I, think I like the security aspect of IT. I remember people asking, are you a security guard? I thought you were in IT because 
back then speed wasn't quite as big as it is today. Um, interesting about me, so I studied in Russia, actually. I went to university in Russia. Um, I did my first degree in electronics and radio physics. Um, I came back, I got my first job, as I've already mentioned. Um, then I sort of moved into um, consulting. Um, I actually did my master's degree at Royal Holloway, did a lot of crypto stuff. Uh, um, today I work for Microsoft, so I'm a senior uh, cloud security architect for, uh, for Microsoft. Prior to that, I have been doing mostly contracting. I've worked across a broad range of industries, from banking to governance, governments to you know small, medium-sized enterprises, retail. I've done a lot, and I've been in this business for a long time, so 20-something years as the lack of hair will attest, so <laughs> that's me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dimitri. Um, Sonia, can you can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Something exciting. Uh, sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Sonia Moise. Um, I'm a principal security engineer uh, based in London uh, at Threadbox. I'm also a lifelong traveler who lived in the Middle East, North Africa and Asia. I actually made a career change uh, 12 years ago uh, from international business consultants um, to full stack software engineer when I was based in South Korea and to principal security engineer here uh, in the uh, in the UK. Uh, I'm also a GitHub star uh, sneak ambassador. Uh, and I'm a strong advocate for uh, women in tech. Uh, that's why I founded an initiative called Epic Women in Cyber and Epic Women in Tech. I'm also an ambassador for Girl Codes. I'm passionate about open source, uh, DevSecOps and cloud computing. Fantastic. Wow, that's a lot. And a lot in 12 years as well. That's a, that's a huge change. And it's, it's great to see you contributing to the, the industry as well, Sonia. That's, that's really amazing. Thank you. Um, so, Tiziana, hi, lovely to meet you. How can I top up Sonia? You know, it's incredible. But she loves open source. So, Elastic is an open source company. So, it's, uh, it's really good to hear. Uh, so, Tiziana, I'm, uh, I'm Italian. I've been living in London for 24 years probably more than what I spent in, uh, in my own country. Uh, I've been in the industry, probably IT, 15 years of the, and I said my cyber probably, you know, when I was working for a company called Mindcast, I've started hearing about, you know, encryption and all these uh, funky terms and how secure and unsecure our email were. And the past five and a half years before Elastic, I was, I worked for a crypto company selling the most, the best, probably kept secret in cybersecurity, which is hardware security module for protection of encryption keys. Uh, currently at Elastic, where we have the security angle, because Elastic is a search company that you use every day from, uh, from Uber to Tinder. So if you're looking for love. But apart from that, uh, Elastic powers uh, was used as a security tool before he had the security offering because Security is a data problem, effectively. So I'm really excited to be to be in a company that's really pervasive to to many many companies. Probably you use it like 80% you are on the internet. Something interesting I've done. I've uh, I'm trying to do something for women advocacy. So I participate to a panel um, for girls in Dakota for an association called Cyberha from 12 to 16 to encourage them to go into cybersecurity. They've heard, probably they've heard only from technical people. Uh, and I was sort of the salesperson there. Say, and, and I told them, look, girls, if I could do it, coming into a country without speaking the language, 24 years old, anyone can do it. So don't be scared, jump and do it. And I hope, I hope the message came across. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much, Tiziana. Oh my gosh, it's that, that's a it's really inspiring story, actually, and, and yeah. People need to hear this actually more and more. Um, okay, so who should we who should we speak to? Oh, Anate, would you mind introducing yourself again? No problem at all. Sorry if anyone has heard this before. I'm um, Owenate, Best Man, um, founder and director of Best Man Solutions. So I help um, business leaders and security leaders find security talent. And on the flip side, I also help applicants, candidates, whether they're active or passive. Um, find the next opportunity. So I'm a people person. 
Um, I've been in recruitment my whole career, and anyone that says that they chose to go into recruitment is lying. I fell into it straight after graduating, and initially, many moons ago, I think 20 years ago, I started. I started placing. Um, I spent a couple of years placing pharmacists, and I was the first um, recruiter in the UK to place a contract pharmacist within a UK prison. Uh, so. Uh, so from then, I placed within IT in tier one investment banks, um, mainly first to third line and some pro, um, program and transformation work, and then moved into operational risk. And I moved into cybersecurity about nine years ago, which is the perfect blend of operational risk and technology. So I was able to understand it to, to the level needed quite quickly. Um, my company was I said this before. I set on my company on the first week of lockdown, but that it was actually a strength, a benefit, as uh, you know, as scary as that was, because I was able to have more engaging and open conversations with people. Uh, so yeah, and it allowed me to strengthen my network. Something exciting that I've done. Um, I'm a little bit of. Uh, Te uh, Trekkie, I'm a little bit of a geek, a little bit of a space geek, um, love my sci-fi. So I started working with a couple of space and satellite firms um, um, in really advising them on what kind of skills that they need to look for um, when when recruiting, because um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a huge threat vector from space debris to governance issues to state-sponsored attacks. So it's, you know, I really get to geek out there and really add some um, 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 it really add some advice to what kind of skills and what kind of mature security industries lend well to that emerging market. So, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And um, Vlad, I'll hand over to you as well, just to do an intro. And just want to say to everyone who's watching, apologies, uh, there's a bit of a problem with LinkedIn streaming, but we're still live on YouTube. So. Um, live on YouTube and looks like we also live on Twitter. I'm not sure how Francesco oh, managed managed okay. to do that, but uh, <laughs> looks like it's working. So um, yeah, uh, Vladimir Jirasek, uh, founder and CEO of Foresight Cyber. I'm basically a geek. Uh, so I've, I've always been fascinated with uh, computers. First computer when I was 13, I think, a uh, long time ago. Uh, not revealing, revealing my age. Uh, but then did the university uh, with the business studies and IT kind of combination, which is really useful uh, these days. Uh, and then got a call from uh, from my friends to to jump in as a as a firewall administrator um, slash security, um, not expert, even more like analyst. Uh, uh, and I, I I went for it, even though the job that I was offered in Accenture paid about 30% more uh, at that time. Uh, and I've, I've never looked back. You know, I was really, really happy in, you know, so far in cybersecurity because it's a it's an ever changing uh, landscape. There's mm -hmm. always something new, um, uh, even though the concepts don't necessarily change, but the technology changes. Um, and it's accelerating, of course, especially with the cloud computing. So um, I'm, I'm really happy I made a good choice and not become a run of the mill consultant, even though now I'm running consultancy company, actually, <laughs> in a different capacity, I guess. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Vlad. I think that's, that's, um, that brings us around to the, the introductions. And I think we can start the panel discussion now. Now, now uh, we've met everybody. Um, so my first question um, is, in your opinion, is, is enough being done to attract diverse talent um, in this industry? And I'll pop this in, in the comments as well. So uh, feel free, anyone who wants to uh, jump in. So uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll go first, uh, if, you, if you don't mind, and uh, unless some, someone wants to, wants to go, but I'll, I'll have oh. a quick one. Uh, just still still the line so we have um, our company has a technical team in in Czech Republic and we are you know we've been hiring for last five years uh, quite quite extensively and despite my direct let's say uh, instructions to the management team 
uh, and to my COO to hire women into the team. Unfortunately, uh, in, in the area where the team is uh, you know, at university, uh, there seem to be very few that are you know, either skilled or willing to go into the cyber. They, for some reason, they, they, they see it more as a, as a boys uh, game and, uh, and hence not challenging themselves and not making themselves available, even though our company provides all the training necessary to become a cybersecurity specialist. You know, there, there's nothing that we need other than the hungry, to be hungry for the knowledge and, uh, uh, and of course, put some time in. And so, and so that's the statement of the fact uh, that I've seen and you know, witnessing as, as a company CEO uh, in our own workforce. Thank you. Thanks, Vlad. So who would like to jump in? Maybe I can talk about what my, you know, in my past, I've just been in my current company two months. And uh, well, I can say that in the past, in the companies I've been working for, I've never seen this drive on, uh, on diversity. I, I really see it now. I mean, it, it's just incredible. Half of the the management team, you know, the top managers, you know, is women. It, th there's no quote. It's just just an attitude. In fact, I came myself into the company through an association called Power to Fly that was letting the women in the company talk about how it was to work in um, in Elastic. And basically, I didn't really even apply for a position. I said to this other lady, I want to work for these people. I said, the women in there seems really to have some things apart that is really relevant and they're listened to, something like, say, I didn't experience before. And when I came here, I see that they have like seven different diversity and equality panel, uh, black, Hispanic, um, they're, they're run by elasticians, so they're not running by HR, which is something that I've seen before and it doesn't really work. They're run by people in the organization. And, uh, and there is this, People call it culture, we call it source code of the come as you are. But I give you an example. I've never seen people, you know, in these luck pictures, there are people with blue hair, you know, leather collars, everything goes. And I think, oh my God, that would never have happened in the previous companies. So what for companies, the culture that is a piece of paper, here I really see it. And I see lots of women from all around Europe and it's a good place for women. But as I said, this is something that unfortunately I see it as an exception, not the rule. Mm. But hey, I've been in the same company for five and a half years. Maybe times are changing, hopefully. But it would be, I, I see my company is doing what mm. everybody else should be doing. Now, I'm not aware about the rest. Perhaps I can cut in there, if you don't mind. I think... Um one of the things I bring to the table is being able to recruit for a wide array of organizations through different industry sectors. So I'm able to really assess the maturity and really, really assess what organizations are saying versus what they're doing. The organizations I try to recruit for, but they just don't have a good reputation and that kind of um, um, an area. One, I feel anyway that it's, to have a diverse workforce, it's it's a journey um, rather than a destination. So I think organizations should be really more more honest in regards to where they're at currently and where they want to go. Um, and one of the ways to do that is actually quantify that. I mean, NatWest, for example, they've actually addressed um, um, their lack of ethnic diversity within leadership positions they've they've you know they've they've actually stated that by the end of 2024 um um sorry it was uh, sorry by 2025 um 14% of the leadership um will come from an ethnic minority background um so th that's really holding your hands up and actually putting a figure behind that and there are many areas of diversity from gender to neurodivergence to um, ethnicity. I think that it should be treated as a whole. There are separate challenges to creating a truly diverse workforce, but I, I strongly believe that it starts from the top up. It starts up um, from the board of directors. We should look at things like the Parker Review, um, in which 
um, address racial disparity um, within um, FTSE 100 firms. Um, and, you know, upon reflection of that, it's um, they've actually um, updated that and um, looked at FTSE 250 firms and actually set a target. So really, it starts from the top down. And again, I feel that it is a journey, a journey of honesty um, rather than um, rather than a destination. But you have to put tangible things in place to know what progress you're making. And it's a scary thing, but I think, you know, you have to be honest with that. That's that's really interesting. And actually, I've got a point on that, uh, the quantification piece. But what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll move on to the to the panel. Thank you so much. Um, Dimitri, what, what are your views on this? Is enough being done to attract diverse talent in the security industry? But I think that's it's a really interesting question. Um, so I think the way I, when I thought about this, when I saw the, the sort of agenda, is when we say is enough being done, I think I step back and say, well, what should be done or what can we do? Um, I think, well, I can certainly speak. So I've already mentioned, obviously, I've been a freelancer contractor for a long time. So I actually joined Microsoft. Um, one of the reasons, and touching on what Owen has said, earlier about the leadership and leadership makes a huge difference in terms of changing the culture in terms of actually showing and demonstrating uh, the, the, the desire to say and the, the, the will to you know attract people of various races sexes beliefs backgrounds etc and what really really attracted me to Microsoft was they don't just talk the talk, they genuinely walk the walk. And I've seen this, I'm reasonably new there, but the amount of effort spent in terms of training, um, the genuinely invest in allowing people to be themselves, I think, you know, it's been touched on, about coming as you are and be who you are. Um, a lot of training, um, I actually learned about covering because I've been doing a lot of covering myself. Um, coming from a non-white background in the UK, you know, being able to freely express who you are, being able to be proud of who you are, the way you talk, you know, um, I felt uncomfortable in many areas, some certain situations because I had sound different or look different. So, so coming back to the question, is it not being done? I, I would say certainly within Microsoft, I've seen it myself. Is enough being done in other organizations I've been in? Um, I think it's fair to say that more can be done and perhaps should be done. Um, and by more, what I mean, so I think one key thing in Microsoft, which I genuinely um, have seen, and it's there for everyone to see, is the leadership. So if you look at the senior leadership within Microsoft, and I mean the very senior, uh, so from SATA all the way down, you see a variety of diverse backgrounds, people, sexes within Microsoft. It's not just them saying that we want to um, have diversity. It's not they're just them measuring. It's okay to have measures and say, okay, we've got X number of people, various backgrounds. That's great. But what are you going to do about it? So you have the metrics. Are you doing anything about them? And Microsoft absolutely are. I mean, you can see that all over the leadership team. Um, so for me, it's, it really means a lot. And I think to your point, I think, you know, you just asked about what can and should be done. I think promoting people. So speaking for myself, when I joined, it's that feeling that, you know, you have worked hard, you have um, studied a lot, you've done a lot of work, and being able to be rewarded in the sense that you get promoted you get moved to position that you feel you deserve. And I think that's really, really important for organizations to do. I think they really must work hard at not just bringing in the talent, because that's fine, but also promoting the talent to the position that they deserve. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dimitri. Just I, what I'll do is I'll just touch on the point I was going to make um, just before we lose that, because I think it ties in what Owenate was saying about uh, metrics, the metrics piece and sort of quantifying 
the data for organizations but then on the piece um D D dimitri what you, where you were actually talking about how feeling like yourself do you actually feel like yourself and i do know because i there was a in 2020 there was a joint initiative between the national cyber security center and kpmg to report on the benchmarking of the levels of diversity and inclusion in the workforce and at the moment there is a there is a questionnaire that is out that has been published for 2021 what i'll do is i will pop that in in the chat if anyone is interested to have a look at that um that is the actual inclusion dni inclusion so have a look at the questions on that if you feel comfortable in the audience to, to complete that i actually completed it yesterday um but that just does covers all topics of of uh, diversity um and and specific questions about how you feel because i think it's good to kind of get that um as we've discussed um actually get that measure first of all um but yes i've just i've just pointed that out but um if if i move on uh to sonia sonia what, what's your what's your thoughts on this and i'll, I'll share the question again as well uh, yeah sure I, I think we're missing also role models uh to inspire diverse talents uh because we, we can talk about how to attract diverse talent but if we don't have role models also to inspire and to tell about their journey um their challenges uh how did they actually um move to the uh that in this industry that would also help inspire and attract more talents uh, i'm not talking about rock stars like the the names that we usually see uh, on twitter or linkedin but uh role models at uh, any level not only in the on the exact um positions but also like entry level just to inspire and uh, to have more like women on more diverse uh talents Fantastic. yeah it's a really good point it's a really good point um and it kind of ties in with what Dimitri was saying about um, showcasing and, and uh, promoting people into, into, into those positions. And then those people actually, dem just by being themselves, just demonstrating to others um, looking in the industry, they can see people who look like them or um, so on. So who else would like to, Kriti, I don't know, Kriti, would you like to comment on this as well? I'd say I very much agree with the panel here. I think one, I think generally women tend to think that most of the job in security is very technical, and uh, no offense, but sometimes it does. Um, it doesn't really attract. It doesn't do really do its job, and sometimes the way the job is presented um, as well in the job description um, and who they are looking for. You know, I think there's a lot more which could be done in terms of attracting women and even keeping women in the industry, as in if you've been in the industry for some time and things change in your life and, you know, and, and how do you keep the job, for example, for some people who want to, you know, have a family and those kind of things. So I don't think the industry is mature enough to look after all of those different aspects um, of you know bringing women into and encouraging them but also looking after them in the same way now i'm not saying this because it's, it's a woman women has to be part of the job or the woman has to get the job because it's it's a woman but it's more like it is meritocracy at the same time however we just need to probably come down calm down a little bit um and and make make it make it very inclusive as we say and that's that's really yeah. right on the industry fantastic thank you so much if i could jump in on that very quickly yeah. as well shireen so yeah, I really, please. Really, really like what this is saying i think so there have been studies um as demonstrated and shown that diversity in every form right so in every way you know actually increases uh you know productivity increases uh, ideation, the different ideas, thinking, etc. And that certainly is really, really important, certainly in our field, which is so um, rapidly changing and evolving. So it's it's been shown that the more diverse your workforce is, you know, this is not just security, the more productive, the more um, exciting, the more future ready an organization is. So within Microsoft, you know, that, that is obvious. I think I work with an amazingly diverse set of people. And, you know, you sit in a room, you know, I've been in this business a long time, and you hear some ideas from really young people, you just go, wow, 
I never thought of that, or I never saw it that way. It's just that different angle, that different viewpoint, which comes from having a different background, perhaps a different view on things, is so, so important and so valuable. And I think, you know, organizations who do not recognize that diversity are really doing themselves a, a disservice. It's true. It is absolutely true. You need that diversity of thought, just the diverse range of skills, backgrounds. You need that for today's complex challenges, really. You need to have that. Um, now, I know we've touched on this already because we've got a group of problem solvers on the call, but is there anything else that you can think of what changes you would like to see in industry or what would you like others to do? What, what behaviour would you like to encourage in others, especially, especially professionals as well, especially colleagues, um, everyone? Has anyone got any ideas on that? Let me jump on this one, Shireen. So allow me. So I think for me, when I, you know, obviously growing up uh, as, a, as a minority in, in the 70s, a sort of a black person really in the UK, I think one of the things we need to, to recognize is that when we talk about work and industry, also we're talking about people, right? So people in the street society as a whole. And I have to say, you know, I was shocked at some of the things that I heard and saw following the Euros this year. And I thought to myself, is this really 2021? What's really changed? So to answer your question about what should or can be done, I look at my six-year-old son, right? And I understand that children are not born prejudiced. You know, they, they don't understand racism or sexism. I look at the way they play with each other. So clearly this is taught sometimes even, you know, learned or sometimes, as I say, talked by somewhere, by someone. The point I'm trying to make here for me, I think in what can be changed is, you know, a lot have been said about different things, but I firmly believe, um, and going back to, to my boss, Satya Nadella at, at, at Microsoft, it really resonates with me is compassion. Compassion and love. So I think I'm certainly going to teach my son and hopefully his generation will be a lot more compassionate and, and loving towards each other because that leads to respect that leads to you know not even accepting but more um, understanding of different people and differences and different things that compassion for me um, starts at home and hopefully feeds into organizations because ultimately you know if if like I mentioned on the Euros and what the abuse that was thrown at the players. You know, these are people we work with, maybe see every day. They could be people in organizations. It's, it's much wider. There's no use to someone coming into an organization but having, you know, layers of prejudice around them, right? Or being false, not being who they are. Right? It's not going to work. I think it has to be a bigger drive, hopefully, towards society being more compassionate and loving towards each other. So that, that will be my hope. And in fact, I, I firmly believe that that will happen. Yeah. What, what, one person at a time. But yeah, I, I think that that's the, the best attitude to have, um, Dimitri. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know, Sonia, uh, Tiziana, did you want to jump in? Um, yeah. Uh, um, Oh, yeah, I, I would say um, probably having less gatekeepers also that could um, dismiss those who'd like to um, enter the, uh, the industry. As you said, Dimitri, like having compassion and create a safe space uh, just to attract those uh, diverse talents um, would be also one uh, one thing that we, we could look because um, there's out there there's, there's some uh, gatekeepers that try to uh, set the uh, entry level of standards quite high, maybe because they're insecure or reasons that. Um, yeah, if we create that safe space, uh, it's it's fine to have everyone at the uh, at the table and have those discussions and diversity. Uh, um, yeah, that'd be the right place. Fantastic, Tiziana. So something I've seen is um, some bias training that was quite interesting mm. for me because you always think, oh, I'm not, I'm not this, I'm not that. I don't judge people. I don't judge anything. But after you know, when you do the bias training, I say, oh, you know. 
I say reality is that everybody is biased. You, you just have to deal with it and realize it and have to work towards, you know, changing opinions. It's like, you know, you're talking about, uh, you know, growing up in the 70s, you know, like a black person. For me, I've never, I've never had a professional black person in my life until I was 25. And, uh, and it's funny because I've always been curious of learning about new cultures and uh, exploring, I say, why would you do things differently? And I, I don't know, I don't know why I've always been like that, but I think we should encourage that in companies as well. Maybe the mentoring should be across people mm. from different cultures. Yeah. And uh, what is uh, and something else that I've saw recently also in Elastic, if we employ um, like, I don't know, a non-binary person or, or some of a minority, they try to include in the interview panel, someone mm. like them which is something I've never seen anywhere else, because as you see, you see people, they are like you, and in a way is, it makes a difference. So maybe that practice could be extended to more companies of having mm -hmm. people, even they're not related to the job, but they're more similar to you within the panel of interviewers and uh, giving their perspective on how the culture is in the company. Mm -hmm. well, that's wonderful, thank you so much. Oh, Anate, what do you think? So everything that Tiziana said, um, and I'm not being lazy with my answer because I really like the, un the um, idea of more um, unconscious bias training. Mm -hmm. But what made me smirk was to my last, to your last point about um, maybe people in the interview that come from your background or that that you can relate to. That can also be overdone. Uh, I remember I was um, I was interviewing for a position a few years ago, and then. Um, on the second stage interview, they brought out every black person in the company to come and meet me. It was hilarious. Um, people that had nothing to do with the role whatsoever. It was cute, you know, well meant, but a little bit clumsy. But as long as that balance is met, and you're right, you know, they don't, they don't need to be doing the same role you're going to do. They don't even need to be in your team, but it will give you as the applicant or the potential employee an opportunity to assess that culture and see whether it's a culture and an environment where you can be yourself and i think that's important because you know i know i've back in the days i've worked in environments and recruitment is a ruthless business and it was back in the days as well i've worked in environments where i couldn't really be myself uh, or i felt pressurized to to really to be a to be a certain way and this is when i obviously much, much younger, but you, you know, you want to be in an environment where you can actually showcase your abilities and be your mm -hmm. true self. That's really fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We've got um, a late, a, a late cover actually, but better late than never. I'm going to add to the stream, Chani. Welcome Chani, thank you so much for joining. Hi. I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm late to the party. Um, I had a client meeting and it was planned for half an hour so I could join this, but it just, you know, went over the time. I'm, I'm so sorry. I apologize no, for the late show up. At all, not to worry at all. So, Chani, so what, what we're doing is um, we're just discussing a few questions on um, are we doing enough to attract diverse talent in the industry, in the cyber industry specifically, and um, is there anything, any sort of changes that you would like to see? So. Uh, just from your perspective, would you mind just doing a quick, inter a very quick introduction, um, and then um, if if you could give your your viewpoint of if, if there's anything that you would like to see, um, sorts of changes in the industry in terms of diverse talent, if that's okay. Yeah, thanks. Hi everyone. Um, so my name is Chani, and I'm the managing director for Meta Defense Labs. So um, I work as a consultant, cybersecurity consultant. I'm also a Cyber Essentials Assessor, ISO Auditor, and a ISME Auditor. And I work as a virtual CISO with my clients. So that's a bit of what I do right now. And I come from an IT background. Uh, so I've been in the industry for about um, 19 years now, but coming from IT background where I used to be an IT engineer, and um, every team, even now, um, I end up being the only woman in the team. So <laughs> diversity has been a big, especially gender diversity has been a, a 
thing I've seen over and over again. And um, therefore, I've hired quite a lot of people in females in my company as well, just to kind of balance out. Um, so um, it's it's I think one of the reasons why I started uh, She Sees O Initiative is also to uh, bridge the gaps between diversity. Uh, those of you who don't know about She Sees So, it's a Give Back initiative. I started back in 2018, but it's now gone. Um, people know about it, and and there's a community behind uh, She Sees So. And uh, you know, we look at uh, how to address challenges uh, with diversity gaps, confidence gap, leadership gaps, and also um, we try to empower emotional intelligent uh, cybersecurity leaders. Uh, and I, when I look at diversity, it's not only gender for me. Um, it's all all sorts of diversity, neurodiversity. It's also a big element for me. I sometimes also think I'm on the spectrum. Uh, I know, especially my husband and I, we are both like that. You know, we are. Um, and and it's really important that we recognize people uh, for their talents, not for uh, and also. Um, sort of um, there are companies going around what one of my biggest challenges has been uh, they they want to tick that box the diversity box <laughs> and it's it's great but you have to give the the people the opportunity to prove for their worth you know what are you good at I feel good at the you know the job that you are being hired for it doesn't the gender does not matter and also the bias in, in diversity, that's another element which, I, which really annoys me. You know, just because you're a woman doesn't mean that you, you know, uh, you can't do or you can do certain things. Um, so those kind of things really kind of bug me. And I've had situations where, um, you know, you get treated differently because you are a female. And I know there are a lot of people who've gone through these kind of things. So I would like to see that change, that mentality change. Uh, people should be recognized for their talents and their work and, and their work ethics. And yeah, that, that is in short, I could go on about this, but yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. And uh, thank you so much, Chani. And Vlad, what, 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 what's your, your take on this? Well, uh, you know, what, what changes do we need to do in the industry? I would probably turn this question a bit more uh, on its head, what do we need to do in the society? Is is, is better question uh, because industry it's already too late. I think you know we need to start you know in the family, uh, in a school, especially the you know these primary schools and 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 continue uh, you know basically to show the kids that they can do anything if they go after it if they are hungry uh, and they should not be told that you know this. This job is really for more for boys, and this job is really more for girls, and all that. You know, nonsense essentially. Um, one thing that I've noticed, though, as a kind of, um, or even though I'm current, I'm now a citizen, uh, but uh, I'm of course a uh, foreigner from uh, from Czech Republic, living here in UK. Uh, there is probably too much emphasis on the greatness of the British Empire still, you know, instilled in the students. Um, yes. Not that not, there's not nothing that wrong with that, but uh, I think it, it kind of negatively affects the uh, uh, some individuals uh, into thinking that they are more than some other individuals. Uh, and I, I don't mean men and women, I mean, you know, even race and, you know, other, you know, uh, differences and diversity issues. So, you know, it really needs to start in the society, politicians and, and education. Otherwise, we, we're never going to fix it. And so we can have these diversity panels in 50 years time with exactly the same result. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we do have a question from the audience, but before we go on to that, as we do have a little bit of time, would anyone like to chip in? As it, this has been a theme today. Um, oh, there's a bit of feedback there. Um, um, what advice would you give to somebody hoping to move into cybersecurity as well, this field? This question's gone around to a few different speakers today, but has anyone, because oh, oh, I want to I know you've answered this at, at great depth. Would anyone else like to chip in on that? And I'll, I'll type that into the, 
into the I'll, chat. I'll just in, Shireen. I, I, I presume you're asking the question, what advice to someone from a minority Advanced background? Yeah. So yeah. I would um, say, so my, my advice to, uh, to any young people, you know, from a minority background or, you know, whichever minority they come from would be to, first of all, work hard, work really hard, um, but more importantly, to believe in yourself. You know, if uh, I had to step back 10, 15 years ago when I started, um, I think the advice I could have given my younger self is believe in yourself a bit, a lot more than um, I probably uh, had. I think the belief that I had in myself was obviously hampered by various, you know, issues we have in society, by the behavior of people at work. Um, there's, you know, clear injustice. And, you know, all of that sort of creates uh, around you a bubble of doubt and fear, which, you know, is really hard to break. Um, but I think as you get older and you see um, a lot of uh, what you can do, you compare yourself to other people, you realize, um, yeah, well, you know, I have to believe in myself. I am good enough, you know, um, I'm not an imposter. You know, people talk about imposter syndrome being, you know, am I, should I be here, should I not? Absolutely 100%. I am here where I am today. I think it's fair to say probably because I am actually better than a lot of other people. Um, I think where I came from is you have to be pro and all that to you, you know, and it is probably not the most um, PC thing to say, but it, it is true. It's a fact that to, to get to where I was, certainly when I was uh, you know, applying for jobs, I had to be twice as good as the normal candidate. So I think believing yourself in what it's hard would be two key things I would say. And it's changed, you know, it's definitely it's changed for the better. The landscape and the environment today and the the discourse has certainly shifted um, and shifting in the right direction. So, yeah, definitely believe in yourself, work hard, and, you know, it's, it's a lot easier to get in than it used to be. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, would anyone else like to chip in on that before we move on to uh, the question from the audience? I'd say probably for me, you'd be get yourself some kind of mentorship do some voluntary work, going to networking and have the right attitude really. I think with the right attitude, it, it's it's really, you know, a, a key to success in getting the right role and even as from a diverse background, getting some kind of mentorship, someone to help you out just to understand how it works in the industry um, to get into cyber. So that'd be my two cents really. Thank you so much, Chrissy. Anyone else? Maybe looking for initiatives no, like what I, what I did before, like, you know, talking to these 12 to 16 years old girls, you know, and, and say, you know, what are you waiting for? It's easy. I mean, I, I thought from a sales point of view, I sold also, so it's, it's bloody hard work, but it's a lot of fun. I've been traveling the world because of my job and, uh, and I love it. So hopefully, you know, that gave them an, an inspire, a little bit of an inspiration to, and, and, uh, to go up to go and do it although you know it's not easy i repeat it it's not easy but there's a reward fantastic no that's it's true it is true um we've got i have a slightly different practice for that um, okay i i think of myself as this is something i've always practiced um i don't think too much about where i come from what background or you know that kind of details i always think i'm a global citizen i belong wherever i want to belong and so whenever i'm with different kinds of people like if i'm in the uk or india or sri lanka or south africa or wherever i i try to mix in with the people i'm with um so i don't see myself as a different human being i'm i'm just who i am human <laughs> so and that makes helps me to understand other people's cultures and blend in and you know even think like them so i don't yeah it's, it's something i've always practiced i don't like to put myself into a corner saying oh i'm the minority 
Um, so, yeah, it, that has helped me quite a lot. It's a really good perspective to have as well. Um, I think everyone, we're going to have to close our panel now. But thank, thank you so much for your insight, sharing that with the audience. Um, and we've got everybody, everybody who's joined today, we've got all of their details. If you want to connect with anyone on LinkedIn or find out more about what they, if you've been inspired by what you've heard as well today, um, please have a look at our agenda on, on our website. And we've got the, the LinkedIn uh, contact details for everybody on the panel. So everyone, thank you so much for attending for your contribution today. And uh, we're, we're moving on to the next talk now. We're on, we're on, a, we're on a tight ship today, Vlad. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, everyone, and uh, you. we are pleased to. Let me let me jump in one second, though, before we mm -hmm. we close and before we we give the the pass. I think this is something that is very close to my heart because um, keeping this panel and representation matters and having it diverse and having it different every time. I think it's it's very important and. I love the conversation that went through today. I love the punching point that went through today. So a special thing for me is a very important subject for me and that we keep on doing this more and more with the hope that we don't need to do that anymore and we can just talk about cyber and people, not diverse. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.